team members. I'm delighted to have you here today. And there are lots of prizes for students to win later in the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, please welcome your host for this afternoon, Peter Meehan. live in class and all over the world. For anyone who doesn't know how the game show works, I'll quickly run through it now. There will be two teams, team teachers and team students. Each team is playing for their chosen charity. Each round begins with a member of each team who comes to the podium. As the question is read, the first of the two contested to hit the butter gives their answer. If their answer is one of the most popular answers, then you will hear this sound. Then they can choose whether they want to play or pass the round. If it is not one of the top six answers, then you'll hear this sound. The other player is asked for their answer to see if it isn't in the top six answers then. If it is, they can decide then whether they want to play or pass. If they play, their team will give the answers and hope that they are on the board. If they pass, they force the other team to play. I will ask a member of each team for the answer. If they take too long to answer, then they will hear this sound. Thank you, Owen. The team loses control if they get three strikes and the other pa and the power passes to the other team. Remember, if you take too long to answer a question or get the question wrong, you'll hear this. <coughs> Thank you, Owen. Judges' decisions are final when it comes to timing and who was fastest to buzz in. If a team comes up with all the answers, they get all the points from that round. If a team strikes out, the opposing team is given a chance to steal. When stealing, only the captain of each team may give their answer after consulting with their team. If that answer is on the board, then the team wins that round and steals the points. Whichever team has the most points at the end of all the round wins the prize for their chosen charity. I want to thank all the transition year students for filling out the survey and uh, to remember to the teams that when answering the questions, it was the TYs that filled out these surveys. So you must think like a TY when answering these questions. Okay, so let's find out who is on both teams. So first, we go to team students and their captain, Oscar Mulligan. So, Oscar, <laughs> what charity will team students be playing for today? Saint Vincent de Paul. So Saint Vincent de Paul, excellent charity, and best of luck today. So we might introduce everybody watching to the team. Uh, to the my to my right is Jimmy Monahan. Hi, Jimmy. Stephen Doyle. Hi, Stephen. Brian Lynch. Hi, Brian. Oh, yeah. Rowan Elliott. Hi, Rowan. Oh, yeah. And Jim Davis. Hi, Jim. Okay, so best of luck today, guys. Now we will introduce team teachers. So, team teachers captain is Miss McDonough. Miss McDonough, what charity are you playing for today? Balmore Nursing Home Patient Comfort Fund. Balmore Community Nurse Nursing Home Patient Comfort Fund. Excellent charity and best of luck today. You might introduce team teachers to everybody watching. Father Klein. Hi, Father. Mr. O'Darty. Hi, Mr. O'Darty. Mr. Brennan. Hi, Mr. Brennan. Mr. Moriarty. Hi, Mr. Moriarty. And Miss Cawley. Hi, Miss Cawley. So, best of luck to everyone today. <laughs> so, let's play Family Fortunes, round one. Can I have the first two contestants, Oscar Mulligan and Miss McDermott, to the podium, please? <laughs> Chips is the top answer with 43 points, which means you've also won yourself a lovely little prize. You'll be taking a trip to Kate's Kitchen one of the days. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> what team teachers like to play or pass the round? Take the pass that one only. Yes. So we are a pass the round, which means team students are forced to play this round. <laughs> 
don't know the answer. <laughs> You know, first, name something that you put salt on. Uh, beef. You said <laughs> beef. <laughs> 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 Our survey says... Oh, unlucky Oscar, sorry, beef was not on the top six answer. So, Jimmy, next up. Name something you put salt on. Uh, steak. You said steak. <laughs> You put salt on. Uh, eggs. You've said eggs. Our survey says. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. Which means you have out of two strikes. So, team teachers, get ready to stay. Well, okay. Brian, <laughs> name something you put salt on. You put it on the table. <laughs> you said the table. <laughs> Our survey says. and ask them to name something you put salt on. Potatoes? You said potatoes. To steal the round. Is potatoes on the board? Our survey says... So, 
Finally, Oscar, for, to take home round two for Team Stutes, name one thing that you might have in your lunchbox. Pasta. You said pasta. Our survey says... <coughs> oh, Wrong, but that doesn't matter because you only had two strikes. So that means that in round two, Team Stutes have taken round two. <laughs> Let's take a look at the answers from round two. Cool. Name one thing that you might have in your lunchbox. Top answer was apple with 22 points. Second answer was sandwich with 18 points. Third answer was banana with eight points. Fourth answer was chocolate bar with six points. Fifth answer was fruit with five points. And the final answer was crackers with four points. So, at the end of round two, Team students are on 54 points and just marginally in the lead are team teachers with 57 points. So, can I have the next two contestants to the podium please? Stephen Doyle and Mr. <coughs> Don. Steve. Hands behind the back. No help from the audience, please. Fastest to the buzzer. We surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name a country that starts with the letter <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Austria. <laughs> you said Austria. Is Austria on the board? Our survey says. Austria is not on the board. So I'll finish off the question for you, Mr. Riley. Name a country that starts with the letter A. Oh. Oh. Albania. You said Albania. Geography Our survey says. <laughs> well done. Oh. Oh. Albania is correct. Albania is the third highest answer with 12 points. So much has already do. Team teachers want to play or pass that round. Okay, let's play family four. So, Mr. Brennan, name a country that starts with the letter A. Australia. You said Australia. Our survey says... Well done. Australia is correct. Australia is the fifth highest answer with nine points. So... Mr. Moriarty, name a country that starts with the letter A. Armenia. You said Armenia. Our survey says... Unlucky. Armenia oh, is wrong. Yeah, like a <laughs> <laughs> so, first strike for team pages. Miss Coley, name a country that starts with the letter A. Afghanistan. You said Afghanistan. Our survey says... Well done. <laughs> Afghanistan is great. And Afghanistan is the top answer with 14 points. Well done, Miss Colley. So, Miss McDermott. Argentina. Name a country that starts with the letter A. <laughs> you said Argentina. Our survey says. Well done. Argentina is correct. And Argentina is the second highest answer with 13 points. So. Father Crime, we surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name a country that starts with the letter A. Austria. You said Austria. You weren't listening very well, Father. <laughs> you weren't listening very well. Father Crying said Austria. Is Austria on the board? Our survey says. Unlucky. Austria's not, but Austria was already said, Father. Yeah. Anyways, but that doesn't matter because you only got two strikes, which means that team teachers have won round three. So, 
At the end of round three, let's take a look at the answers. Top answer was Afghanistan with 14 points. The second answer was Argentina with 13 points. Third answer was Albania with 12 points. Fourth answer was Azerbaijan with 10 points. Fifth answer was Australia with 9 points. And final answer was Andorra with 8 points. So, at the end of round three, the results are... We're better than a little bit of suspense, Smithen. Team students with 54 points, but in the lead is team teachers with 105 points. <laughs> so, round four. Can I have the next two contestants to the podium, please? <laughs> Brian, this is not some sort of a way. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't ring me back on a real number. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Brown, Brian, Brian, Mr. Brown. Two hands behind the back, please. No help from the audience. Fastest to the buzzer. Name an animal that you cannot fit in a Mini Cooper. Brian. You said an elephant. Our survey says... Well though an elephant is a top answer with 32 points. So Brian, do you want to play or pass? <laughs> Team students are going to play. Round four, let's play Family Fortunes. So, Rowan. Name an animal that you do not fit in a Mini Cooper. Uh, a lion. You said a lion. Our survey says... <coughs> oh, a lion is incorrect. Sorry, Roland. Jim, name an animal <laughs> that you cannot fit in a Mini Cooper. A horse. You said a horse. Our survey says... <coughs> well done, a horse is correct. Horse is the fourth highest answer with six points. So, Oscar. Name an animal that you cannot fit in a Mini Cooper. A giraffe. You said a giraffe. Our survey says? A don, a giraffe is correct. A giraffe is the second highest answer with 13 points. So, Jimmy, name an animal that you cannot fit in a Mini Cooper. A hippo. You said a hippo. Our survey says? A don, a hippopotamus is correct. It is the fifth highest answer with four points. Stephen. Name an animal that you cannot fit in a Mini Cooper. A whale. You said a whale. Our survey says? Well done, a whale is correct. And whale is the third highest answer with 12 points, which means team students have won round four. So let's take a look at the answers from round four. Top answer was elephant with 32 points. Second answer was giraffe with 13 points. Third highest answer was whale with 12 points. Fourth highest answer was horse with six points. Fifth highest answer was hippopotamus with four points. And sixth final answer was cow with three points. So let's take a look at the scoreboard. So in the lead, so, team teachers on 105 points, and in the lead is team students with 121 points. <laughs> so, round five. Now, the next two contestants to the podium, please. Mr. Moriarty, Rowan, Rowan, Mr. Moriarty. Hello. Hello. Two hands behind.
behind the back, please. No help from the audience. Fastest to the buzzer. Name a bad place to fall asleep. Rowan. School. You said school. I definitely will want to fall asleep here. Not at this place. <laughs> <laughs> you said school. Our survey said... Well done, school is correct, and school is the top answer with 18 points. So, Rowan, would you like to play or pass that round? We'll play. You'll play. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on, Rowan. So, team students are going to play round five. Jim, name a bad place to fall asleep. You said outside. Our survey said? Well done. Outside is correct. Outside is the fifth highest answer with seven points. So, Oscar, name a bad place to fall asleep. Church. You said a church. What? Our survey said? <laughs> Unlucky, Oscar. Church is incorrect. That's your first strike. So, Jimmy, name a bad place to fall asleep. You said a toilet. Our survey said? Well done. A toilet is correct. And toilet is the third highest answer with 10 points. So, Stephen, name a bad place to fall asleep. The beach. You said the beach. Good answer, yeah. Our survey said? Well done. The beach is incorrect. So, team teachers, get ready to steal if they get one more wrong. Brian. Name a bad place to fall asleep. In the sun. You said in the sun. Our survey said? Oh, unlucky, wrong, Brian. In the sun is not on the board, which means team teachers have the chance to steal. So I'll quickly get an answer from each of you first. Miss McDemerow, name a bad place to fall asleep. If you're driving. Father Crying. In the pub. Mr. Doherty. In the shower. Mr. Brennan. In the bath. Mr. Moriarty. At work. Miss Colley. Um, anywhere. <laughs> so, Mr. Darrow, you can use one of them answers or your own. The decision is yours. We surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name a bad place to fall asleep. You said if you're driving. Are you sure? Is when you're driving in your car on the board. Our survey says. Well done. Yeah. Behind the wheel, behind the wheel of your car is the second highest answer. So let's take a look at round round five answers. answer was school with 18 points, second answer was behind the wheel with 12 points, third answer was bathroom slash toilet with 10 points, fourth answer was train with 9 points, fifth answer was outside with 7 points and sixth answer was floor with 5 points. So let's take a look at the scores from round 5. <laughs> So, team students on 121 points, but in the lead is team teachers on 152. <laughs> so, round six. I have the next two contestants to the podium, please. <laughs> Miss Collie, Jim, Jim, Miss Collie. Uh, yeah. Two hands behind the back, please. Fastest to the buzzer, no help from the audience. We surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name something that comes in pairs. Miss Collie. 
You said socks. Is socks on the board? Our survey says... Well done, socks is correct. Socks is the second highest answer with 23 points. So, Miss Coley, what team teachers like to pass or play that round? Play. You play, okay. Round six. Let's play Family Fortunes. So, Miss McDemero, name something that comes in pairs. You said football boots. Our survey says... Oh, unlucky. Football boots is incorrect. Father Crying, name something that comes in pairs. You said shoes. Our survey said... Well done. Shoes is correct. Shoes is the top answer with 32 points. Well done, Father. Mr. Doherty, name something that comes in pairs. Eyes. You said eyes. Our survey says... Eyes is incorrect. That's your second strike, so team students get ready to steal if they get one more wrong. Mr. Brennan, name something that comes in pairs. Gloves. You said gloves. <laughs> Our survey says... Well done. Gloves is correct. Gloves is the fifth highest answer with six points. Mr. Moriarty, we surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name something that comes in pairs. Mr. Moriarty, time limit up. So that means, team students, you now have the chance to steal the points from that round by coming up with one of the remaining answers not on the board. Oscar, quickly run through your answers. Oscar. Twins. Jimmy. Twins. Stephen. Twins. Brian. Twins. Jim. Swans. Swans. <laughs> Good answers. There's some great answers there, uh, Oscar. You can use one of them or you can use your own. Uh, I'll use my own. Okay, you'll use your own. Twins. You said twins. Is twins on the board to steal the round? Our survey says. Yeah. Twins is correct, and twins is the third highest answer with eight points, which means team students have stolen round six. So let's take a look at the answers from round six. Top answer was shoes with 32. The second highest answer was socks with 23. Third highest answer was twins with eight. Fourth highest answer was AirPods with seven. Five, fifth highest answer was gloves with sixth, and sixth highest answer was feet with five. <laughs> so, at the end of round six, let's take a look at the scoreboard. So, team teachers on 152 points, but in the lead on 190 points is team students. <laughs> So, round seven, the penultimate round. Next two contestants, please. First two back up. Again. I do look at the questions. Do not the questions. Look away. So, two hands behind the back, please. Fax this to the buzzer. No help from the audience, please. <laughs> we surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name something that only happens once every few years. Oscar. An election. You said an election. Good answer. Our survey says... Well done, election is correct. An election is the fifth highest answer with seven points. Which means the decision is yours, Oscar. 
Would you like to play or pass that round? Can I discuss it with my teammates? You can. <laughs> what are we thinking? <laughs> Remember, there's some very well educated people on Team Teachers. I think we'll go for it. Okay, let's play round seven. Let's play Family Fortunes. <laughs> So, round seven. Jimmy, we surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name something that only happened once every few years. The World Cup. You said the World Cup. Excellent answer. Yeah. Our survey says, well done, the World Cup is correct. And the World Cup is the second highest answer with 18 points. So, Stephen. Name something that happens once every few years. You said the Olympics. Our survey says... Well done. The Olympics is correct. The Olympics is the fourth highest answer with 12 points. So, Brian. Name something that only happens once every few years. A leap year. You said a leap year. Our survey says... Well done, the leap year is the top answer with 24 oh. points. So. <laughs> Go on. Name something that only happens once every few years. Uh, the Euros. You said the Euros. Our survey says... Oh. The Euros is incorrect. <laughs> So Jim, name something that only happens once every few years. Uh, presidential election. Are you sure? No. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I am sure. You said the presidential election. Our survey says... <coughs> That's okay, Jim, because you only got two wrong. So that means team students have won round seven. So let's take a look at the answers from round seven. With four points. So. Okay, everyone, welcome back to Summerhill College Family Fortunes. Let's remind ourselves of the scores. Quentin. So, team teachers on 152 points and still in the lead with two rounds left to go is team students on 251 points. <laughs> So we now have some prizes to give out to a student from each year to thank them for their contribution to the collection today. So from first year is Rory Julian O'Connor in St. Francis. He's won himself a flip side voucher. In second year is Shane Kennedy, St. Dominic. You've won yourself an EJ's voucher. In third year is Mark Tracy in St. Clement. You've won yourself an EJ's voucher. In TY is Andrew Byrne in TY5. You've won yourself an EJ's voucher as well. In fifth year is Ryan McMorrow in 505. You've won yourself a flip side voucher.
And in leaving cert is Aidan Davey in 601. You've also won yourself a flip side voucher. So, well done to all the winners there. We also done a draw for the Leaving Cert students who applied to take part in the quiz. Since we only had six uh, places for Leaving Certs, we done a nice wee draw for them. And the winner of that is Eamon Flynn in 602. You've just won yourself the brand new Slager Rovers away jersey. So, well done, Eamon. Well done to everyone, and we'll get those vouchers to you in the next few days. So let's get on with round eight. So can I have the next two contestants to the podium, please? Go on, Jimmy. Father Jimmy, Jimmy Father. <laughs> two, ha <laughs> two hands behind your back. No help from the audience, please. <laughs> Fastest to the buzzer. We surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name something that you do just once a week. Jimmy. Train. You said train. Our survey says train is correct. Train is the fifth highest answer with five points. So, Jimmy, the decision is yours. Would you like to play or pass that round? Pass. You want to pass that round. So, team teachers, get ready to play Family Fortune. <laughs> So, Mr. Doherty, name something that you do just once a week. Grocery shopping. You said grocery shopping. Our survey says... Well done, grocery shopping is correct. And grocery shopping is the top answer with 18 points, which means, Mr. Doherty, you've not won yourself a nice one-for-all voucher. Thank you. So... Mr. Vernon, name something you do just once a week. Go to Mass. You said go to Mass. Our survey says... Well done. <laughs> go to Mass is correct and is the third highest answer with 10 points. So, Deputy Moriarty, <laughs> name something that you do just once a week. Because it's TY, I'm going to say work experience. Oh. 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 You have your thinking cap on. I need it. Name it. something that you do just once a week. You said work experience. Our survey says. Yeah. 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 Work experience is correct. And work experience is the fourth highest answer with six points. So, Miss Colley. Name something that you do just once a week. Climb a mountain. <laughs> you said climb a mountain. Our survey says... Oh. That's your first strike, Miss Colley. Climb a mountain is not correct. <laughs> Miss McDermott, to take home round eight for team teachers, name something that you do just once a week. Just once a week. The thing was, I wouldn't take that. You said take a shower just once a week. Our survey says. Take a shower is correct, and somehow take a shower is the second highest answer. 
So there definitely must be some smelly gits in TY. So let's take a look at the answers from round eight. So name something that you do just once a week. Top answer was shopping with 18 points. Second highest answer was shower with 11 points. Third highest answer was mass or church with 10 points. Fourth highest answer was work experience with six points. Fifth highest answer was training or workout with five points. And last answer was clean, which was three. So let's take a look at the scores from round eight. So, team teachers on 202, but still in the lead with 251 points is team students. So, can I have the next two contestants to the podium, please? Stephen, Mr. Doherty, Mr. Doherty, Stephen. <laughs> okay, both hands behind the back, please. You can, you can, puff, your, you can puff your chest there. <laughs> No help from the audience, please. Fastest to the buzzer. We surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name a city that people visit for <laughs> a short break. Mr. Doherty. Paris. You said Paris. Is Paris on the board? Our survey says? Well done. Paris is correct. Paris is the second highest answer with 12 points. So, Mr. Lordy, do you want to play or pass that round? We play it here. Okay, we play. Let's play round nine. Tommy Fortune. <laughs> so, final round. Mr. Brennan, name a city that people visit for a short break. And I don't know where you could be visiting for a short break. <laughs> <laughs> that could be any part of the world, but... I go for London. You said London. Our survey says... Well done, London is correct. <laughs> London was the fourth highest answer with 10 points. So, Mr. Moriarty, name a city that people visit for a short break. Uh, Dublin. You said Dublin. Our survey says, well done, Dublin is correct. <laughs> Dublin is the top answer with 16 points. So, Miss Colley. No prize, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> Name a city that people visit for a short break. Amsterdam. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Miss Colley. <laughs> yeah, you've obviously been, you've obviously been before. I haven't talked to you. <laughs> you definitely have, Mr. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at, Mr. Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said Amsterdam. Our survey says. Oh. Amsterdam is incorrect. So, Miss McDermott Rowe, name a city that people visit for a short break. New York. Oh. You said New York. Our survey says? <coughs> well done. <laughs> New York is correct. New York is the third highest answer with 11 points. So. Father Crian, to take home the final round for team teachers. We surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name 
a city that people visit for a short break? Rome. <laughs> you said Rome. <laughs> Our survey says? Well done. <laughs> So Rome was the sixth answer with three points. But before we reveal the final score, we'll do one final question, head to head. So each team will nominate a member of each team to come up to the podium, and we'll ask one more question to win a further 100 euro for your chosen charities. OK. So if I could have a member from each team to the podium, please. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the walk? <laughs> if I had to, I know what I do with it. That's the way. Yeah. Two hands behind the back, please. No help from the audience. Fastest to the buzzer. If I could ask you to stand behind your buzzer, please, Miss McDermott Rowe. I see him. <laughs> stand behind your buzzer, please. Thank you. Remember, it's the highest answer. So, fastest to buzz in will get the first chance to answer. If you get that wrong, the second person will get to answer. To win an extra, for, an extra 100 euro for your chosen charities, we surveyed 100 TY students and asked them to name a Star Wars character. Oscar. Yoda. You said Yoda. Didn't do. <laughs> is, <it laughs> is Yoda on the board? Our survey says. Well done, Yoda is correct. Yeah, Mr. Brennan, I'll get to that if you let me speak. <laughs> I can confirm, Oscar, that Yoda was the highest answer. So you've also just won yourself a nice one for all voucher as well, and an extra 100 euro for your chosen charity. So well done. <laughs> Questions have been asked. Let's find out the winners of the first ever Summerhill College Family Fortunes. Yeah. Before we announce the winners, though, we have a few thank yous to do. So, I'd like to thank all the participants from today's show for giving up their time today and everyone who helped the production. So, Thanks to everyone on the Student Council, especially those that helped today in a big way behind the scenes. Thanks to Porrick, Owen, Eamon, Cormac, Connor, Connor, and James McDermott. Also, I'd like to thank Mr. Donner for all his technical support today, Mr. Kyo for allowing us to run this event, Ms. Maura Murphy for her support, Mr. Moriarty for all his help with scheduling the event and changing the rooms and getting cover for teachers. Thanks to all the teachers for supporting us, Mr. Gormley for drawing up our signs, Siobhan in accounts, Marie and Fiona in the office, and Sean and Noel who are great setting up everything. I'd also like to thank James on the camera and Edward who set up all the amazing equipment today and today's production and worked tirelessly to make sure everything looked all right and sounded their best. But finally, and most certainly not least, I'd like to give a huge, huge thank you to Mr. Whelan for all his help in our organizing show. So, before we announce the winners, I'd just like to hand it over to Mr. Kyo today, who will, just, uh, who will do the draw for the best dress uh, Leaving Cert student today and say a few words. So, Mr. Kyo. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just to re-emphasize everything that Peter has said, he has named all the people, so I won't go through the names again, but I do want to extend a huge thank you to Peter himself, who has been an absolutely extraordinary host today. I'm sure everybody will agree. Yeah. So well done, Peter. Um, the student council have been extraordinary in terms of the work that 
they've put into this uh, production, but also their ongoing work in terms of trying to generate positive spirit over the last year. And I'd like to thank each and every one of them, including their teacher who guides them in the process, uh, Mr. David. Um, I suppose for me, uh, this is a really, really, really excellent event. Uh, when Peter first told me about it, um, I was kind of really, really looking forward to it, but I didn't think it would be this good. And I really want to say thank you to everybody for yeah. the way that the event yeah. went into it. So, Before I go on uh, to announce the winner of the best dress leave insert, I do have to say something really important though. Lads, it's imperative that you shower more than once a week. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, we're looking forward to the celebration of the leave inserts uh, tomorrow and we do wish them the best of luck over the next few weeks, but we'll, be, we'll get more to that tomorrow for their graduation ceremony. So, delighted to announce the best dressed leaving cert today, 12th of May, is Rowan Ellett. <laughs> Done, Rome. Congratulations. So now it is time to reveal the scores. So the scores are as followed with 251 points oh. is team students, but with 254 points and our winner today. So there's only three in the difference, so don't be too disheartened, team students. Don't be too, don't be too disheartened. We won't, we won't send you home empty-handed. We'll give you, including your bonus prize, a nice 500 euro for your charity, St. Vincent de Paul, today. So well done, lads. And team teachers, the winner today of Summerhill Family Fortunes have won a magnificent 900 euro for their chosen charity. So well done to everybody today. <laughs> so all that remains for me, to, for me to say today is a thank you to everyone here. Thanks to everybody watching and goodbye. We've played Summerhill College Family Fortunes. <laughs>